how India can ace the semiconductor manufacturing scene. Joining me on the program today are Dr. Ajay Dua, former Commerce and Industry Secretary, Government of India, Shubhamoy Bhattacharji, Consulting Editor of the Business Standard, and Sumant Parimal, founder of Five Jewels Research. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of Big Picture. Mr. Dua, uh, let me start the program with you first. We know that uh, India is trying to do something with Taiwan as far as semiconductors are concerned. You know, uh, we, are, we are also coming up with this mammoth 75,000 uh, crore rupees scheme for uh, semiconductors. What do you make of this scheme? Uh, Frank, I think it, it is a well-structured scheme and I welcome it because we've been wanting to have, <coughs> I'm sorry, we've been wanting to have semiconductor manufacturing take place in India for quite some time. This is actually a third attempt, 2007, 2017 and now. But our earlier schemes were not well designed. We needed to address a number of issues and this particular scheme of $10 billion, that saw the figure 76,000. The, they spent $10 billion in incentive or expenditure scheme uh, made by the Ministry of IT and Electronics uh, last week, uh, covers a whole lot of things. First, it says we will set up two fabrication plants. Second, we would set up a design centers not our uh, several design centers. Third, we will set up packaging centers. You know, just to give a small, I'm sure my colleagues on the panel would know far more than me. You need to manufacture the chips, which the, the basis of which is sand, silica. These are all silicon chips. So you need, and for processing silicon into of uh, uh, chips, of uh, first sheets, you need a whole lot of good water. So these are the two basic requirements for moving on to getting into this industry. The fabrication industry requires that in large. And the, in, the, uh, in the past, I don't think we had even thought about where we will do, how we will go about it. Second, the, in order to make them, these silica fabs or fab, into chips, semiconductors, you need to have transistors put in there. And the distance between the two transistors, the lower it is, the finer is the chip. And the distance is, is measured in nanometers and one nanometer means one billionth I'm repeating myself, one billionth of a meter. So if you say I'm producing two to three nanometer chips, that means two, two billion, two of a billion portion or three of a billion is how close you've been able to bring in the nanometer. The more transistors, the better it is, broadly speaking. Absolutely. So what we tried to do earlier was jump into the very fine ones without knowing how to make them. You start with those which have 20 to current standard is 20 to 30 meters are what are called low end or medium end, which get used in consumer electronics. By and large, you know, white goods, some of the uh, lower end cars, etc., would take in these nano, uh, this, uh, these kind of. The designing of all these is an extremely important. How do you configure these? What functions they are to perform? That's all designing work. So designing is today of large volumes of designing or advanced designing is still being done in the US. So the IPRs for a lot of these conductors, semiconductors are held in the user country because they spend whole lot of their money on R&D. So you have to know that's why 
if you do you have to get into the entire stream of it, packaging is a far easier one. You know, once you manufacture it, then cutting the things and you know, cut, or doing all this kind of stuff is the last bit of the portion. Right. So we are now providing these $10 billion for three or four stages of it. So sure. from land, location, pure water, roads into it, all that's required. And it's a highly labor intensive industry. Indians around the world are involved in it, including say the, the uh, in the US where there is a not a very large, as large an industry as say in Korea, Taiwan or Vietnam now. The, because they also have enough manpower, they can make use of it. But our guys with better engineering skills and past you know, as as IITs or the kinds of the world that we have had, they are supplied, they have supplied enough engineers even to these design centers. Absolutely. Our job has to be to get design engineers to come back here, set up the industry. If they want to find it worth the while, they will stay back. That they probably are looking forward to it was a very recent Congress of Tel in Telangana. Mm. Telangana Association of Engineers based in the US held a meeting. And Andhra Pradesh Coastal That is what can be added. Tata's is looking at similar parts, and of course, adding will not do to it. Absolutely. Points taken, Mr. Dua. Yeah. So, this is what I just wanted to say in the, to introduce the subject. Sorry, it's been a longish introduction. No, 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 that's a great introduction. And thank you for, you know, setting it all up and explaining it so beautifully and putting it into perspective. Shumoy, let me come to you now. You know, uh, like Mr. Dua has explained, you know, this is not a first attempt as far as us trying to get on the semiconductor bus is concerned. Is it too late now? Or do you still think that we can play catch up with some of the world leaders as far as semiconductors are concerned? Thanks, Frank, for asking me to come over. And uh, it's rather an interesting question that whether it's too late or uh, whether, I mean, whether there's still time. Uh, we started off in 2009, a semiconductor con con complex at Mohali, it got burned. In 2012-13, JPs came along and they couldn't raise the asset. I mean, they couldn't raise the finances to be able to set up a semiconductor complex. So we've been trying for a long time as Mr. Dua would know pretty well, and he's, he was been in the, involved in pretty one of those discussions. So yes, uh, it's not that, that we have been late in terms of crying. We had been crying for several, uh, for more than two decades, for almost two decades. The point is we have not been successful. And a couple of reasons there. One is that A, this is a highly internationally surcharged area. Uh, it's India has now realized, and it's actually it's been realizing over the last few years that we needed the chip conduct uh, manufacturing capacity. But even before India sort of got round to sort of getting its thoughts into order that we need a chip manufacturing capacity, the world's leading industrial countries had already decided that they needed that. So they had already collected practically all that was thought possible to make the chips. And as uh, again, I'm referring to Mr. Dua, that it requires a fair, not just fair, a very high level of technological ability to be built beforehand, before you get into chip manufacturing. So India had not been moving that. So once when India decided that we want to move into it, it was faced with this problem that it doesn't have the necessary ecosystem around. So to answer your question, first of all, we'll not be getting into chip manufacturing. We'll mostly be getting into design. That's the first part of it. The second part is even there, we'll have to be building the ecosystem that goes to manufacture those chips. And that itself is a huge thing, huge technological journey. Uh, Water, yes, that's clean water is a surprisingly major requirement. Along with that, you also need land and you also need the technical manpower. Now, all of these three 
frankly speaking in india are difficult ask land is a very fraught subject now to give an example if we have the land we have it in southern india but water is not the place is not what southern india has in plenty and this requires copious amount of water and if we say that fine we'll transfer saline water into pure water that itself raises up the cost of the chip substantially because brine to <coughs> pure water solution is actually a very costly exercise absolutely so there are lots of these issues that will be needed to be surmounted so india frankly i mean every uh, so it's it is a very difficult challenge because of these factors yet there is no getting away from the fact that the industrial economy 4.0 that we talk about needs chips of every sort from the lowest end chip to the highest end chip in every possible gadget that you use we are talking of moving to i internet of things an in internet of things each one of those things will need a chip that's what we are talking about our 5g revolution simply can't start without those chips happening and you can't say that i'll be importing those chips why because the cost economics as well as the political economy is extremely dicey if you just got to be dependent for such a vast country such a vast market to be just be importing those chips it's almost like saying that we will import oil mm. you know it's at that scale let's understand that is the implication and we know the impact of 80% of our oil oil being imported how it has often played uh, massive uh, upheavals in the indian economy So, chip import has the same potential, so that's why it's necessary, even if it's late, to get into the manufacturing business of chips. Yeah, very true. Very true. So, well, let me come across to you now. You know, let's look at uh, this from an industry point of view. You know, the government is trying to get in seventy-six thousand crore rupees, ten billion dollars, uh, to try and get this particular sector upstarted and kicking. but is the industry ready i mean to take on the challenge we've seen time and again that r&d has been a problem area for india you know as far as software is concerned we do very well but when it comes to actually getting into hardware we lag behind yeah thanks for inviting me here in this panel discussion uh with uh, our respected ajay dua sir and subham batachari from business standards so definitely uh, setting right the industry i mean uh, is one of the priority which uh, reflects in these decisions of government and in fact uh, when sir was industrial secretary in central government and that time i was in idc international data corporation as an analyst i was surveying this this particular domain the semiconductor and chip manufacturing domain i had interaction with many uh, that time ceos and ceos of uh, uh, indian chip and electronic industry and the the the, the theme which highlighted that producing in india is not uh, working out on the economic prospects so i think that's the incentive they were looking at that point of time in 2006 and 5 you know and whatever semiconductor and electronic industry we had at that point of time those also closed down in india and as we highly started interdepending on the uh, uh, other part other countries of asia so so i think this uh, uh, you are talking about a 10 billion dollar rather when i analyze this press release uh, circulated by pib i can say that it is injecting around 30 billion dollars incentive so because if you add to the the pli of electronic manufacturing and the component electronics that total sums to 30 billion so ultimately it all points to all to the uh, the electronics and semiconductor industry so if you analyze the whole bu bucket it is 30 billion dollar kitty so i think this is the good boost for as far as uh, setting up the uh, the the semiconductor and electronic manufacturing plants are concerned because the cost economics will be uh, now viable and it is attractive it's all about you know uh, how the uh, the cost of manufacturing comes in taiwan and then how it comes in japan and how comes in india particularly the software story of india as you mentioned that's a booming because the cost economics are good here in india though uh, intermittently we remain hearing about the philippines and china challenges in software story also so that's uh, setting up the cost equation right that is the game here and once you have the right cost and uh, incentive structure then the players will certainly come here because they they also look for uh, good uh, uh, good places for 
setting up their expansion plan and manufacturing plan. But here also, it's the there's a risk here also because the domain of fab manufacturing is most largely concentrated in one of the largest player of Taiwan, which is uh, TSMC. And and uh, now America move. If you see the U.S. move in last June when the new administration has come. What they have done, they have strategically collaborated with TMC. These incentives and all those things are good, but the government of India should also kind of learn the lesson from how US move in this space. They strategically collaborated with the single largest manufacturer of the fab, that is TMC, the Taiwanese uh, company, because they have the huge setup. They know the scale, how these industries need to be set up. So I think similar kind of MOU are urgently need to be signed with the TSMC. And uh, I think that must be uh, in the backdrop of the decision makers and policy makers in government also. They must be working on that. But I think that there's a need of urgency to catch up because the whole, whole supply chain is disrupted. Now uh, we have to regain our lost leadership in this uh, semiconductor world. And, and and I mentioned in my press statement that keeping the semiconductor right, the electronics right is required for the AI supremacy of India. So if India has to gain AI supremacy, then it semiconductor need to be put into order. That That is my kind of opening remark here. Absolutely. And very valid points that are made by you and uh, talking about the entire aspect as to how we need to get the AI game. And for that, we need our semiconductor industry to boom. Only then can we compete with the rest of the world, especially with China, who's you know rapidly advancing. Mr. So, Dua, uh, you know, going back and building on the point that I was making earlier as well about, you know, how we've always struggled when it comes to hardware, when it comes to manufacturing. If you look at the manufacturing bucket as a whole, we haven't done very well. We continue to struggle. Why is that so? Frank, I merely say that from 16% of the GDP, we want to go to 25%. It doesn't happen. The, you don't have enough capital within the country to enable that to happen. You need to get two things if that's to happen. One, supplementary capital, that's your FDI inflows. We, have put, we might have put in place a benign setup for uh, FDI inflows, entry of the FDI. But for FDI to get the returns, comparable returns, vis-a-vis uh, -vis where, where else it could have gone. We need to be constantly updating, constantly boosting what we are doing for the manufacturing setup. Mr. Do, if I could just, if I could just add something here. You know, we keep talking about how FDIs are going up to all-time highs every now and then. We keep reading yes, the yes. newspapers. The so question then. is, we do hear that, but I have always put a rider while accepting the figures as they are given. Is that? Let's talk about comparable figures, which is net FDI, not gross. Net FDI is what UNCTAD puts out its annual data on. And in that, probably we haven't leapfrogged the way we otherwise claim. I don't want to go into data. The fact of the matter is that there is certainly need to supplement Entry of FDI just by relaxing of the rules, it doesn't happen on its own. A lot many things have to be done to get that happen. So in order, see, how did Vietnam get it? How did Bangladesh get it in apparels and, you know, related textile industry? How, how is even Indonesia getting into it? All these countries have done far more than just saying that we are open for FDI. We are open for FDI because we offer a large market. Absolutely. But if the Chinese can dump goods on us and compete with our pricing, which they have done, why would a why this it's not morally right for anybody to say you can't buy the Chinese goods unless you know it's a strategic kind of a good. The, uh, the consumer will buy where he wants to buy it from. And all your markets in India for consumer goods, consumer durables have suffered or have had to live with that. Having said that, let me just come back, Frank, to the issue of semiconductors, which you mentioned. I think, and you asked Shumway a very pertinent question that are we too late about it? I would say no. 
we our market for semiconductors is good is expanding our requirement it's next now only to petroleum 25 billion dollars is our imports of semiconductors the global market is about 500 billion we are importing say 120 at about 5% or so our estimate the way we are going ahead talking of a billion dollar economy and all that stuff it will happen may not be by 2026 it would happen the those kind of things we think that our semiconductor requirement will could go up to 100 billion so why should we continue to import from outside when it is our guys and i emphasize this that our 300000 engineers are in the global ecosystem of electronics and semiconductors i'm not just in semi electronics these are our guys they are they are capable of working outside india they we need to create conditions for them to come back here so you know it's not that you know frank you have traveled all of us have that we guys are most comfortable we are co comfortable production etc but we are always more comfortable back home you know every and what is our comfort here may be the comfort of many other people to go back and work in their own number one number two is taiwan's geopolitical situation has become a matter of concern everybody is concerned that if something some changes take place there that whether one of the largest suppliers of semiconductor their products would be available to the rest of the world or not or would supplies you know supply to supply chains get impacted if past experience is any you know indicator the it could cause huge disruptions if the changes political changes take place in or geopolitical situations take place to occur in that part of the world Right. so we must prepare ourselves for it third as was just mentioned by mr india we seem to have lost the our yeah your back country go ahead mr dua couldn't hear you in between we are a country with potential they were the ones i remember you know since political leaders are not allowed to travel i had an occasion as secretary to travel there more than once the when we got the mobile manufacturing in siri pere parandur from precision to you know that called foxconn its full name is precision something manufacturing company and mr hugh used to be the owner and i think he still the other large promoter right met him couple of times etc they they said we understand but we want early clearances mm. just to you know divert the traffic i said you please tell me what do you want can so much land so much this and the other i said please tell me when are you when are you willing to come he says when you tell me to come i will be there within 7 days we had kept for this for this mobile manufacturing the first unit i am talking of the year 2006 the year which he mentioned he came with three teams with he had his planes chartered planes in india ready met us at 8 o'clock in the morning he said we start at 8 and my minister still kept saying why do you not let me sleep i said no sir you have to give them an assurance you have to come to office at 8 o'clock today because this is a question of 100 million dollar investment that 100 million dollar we gave them three alternatives very close to delhi gurgaon we have a piece of land you want tax incentives capital lower himachal pradesh uttarakhand we at narod dinon badi which is near chandigarh you know and mohali had a, some history of semiconductors etc this was electronics go there third no incentives but you will get labor siri peri payment go he sent at 9 o'clock his teams to go off to these three directions hmm. and he said can i come back to you at 4 o'clock with my answer we waited 4 o'clock he came back he said siri peri pay mandur i need labor i don't need your money i don't need your land cheap but please give me this land within one week 
and I would start the manufacturing. Mm. So I think that is the kind of the way it has to happen. I remember yeah. we reported to it once to the Prime Minister, my minister wrote a letter that this is what we've got a hundred billion, hundred million dollars. Right. So next day for something else. He said, I remember reading something. So we used to all I'm trying to say is our clearances, our promises, and promises have to be competitive. If land is available elsewhere, if water is available, clearances are available, please make them available for this industry. Do not, right. we need this industry, it is labor intensive. I repeat, it is semi skilled labor, skilled labor, hugely employment orientation. They have. Our import bill is there, and this is the time to strike. And this 10 billion might look huge, 30 billion if you include other incentives, etc. This is all competitive. We do need Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, because of this and because of the reasons mentioned so far, Shubhuman, do you think that we need some policy level changes as well if we need to see this work? No, I don't think you need any policy because there hasn't been any policy on chip making. So why do we need to make any policy as such? So I don't see any policy, but the point is that it has to be at this, after all, any unit has to be set up at the states. And uh, all states, I'm sure, will jump in. But the biggest challenge will be that who can provide the land and who can provide the water yeah. along with the technology, along with the technology. And that, I, and that has actually not been a very easy task. The Taiwan uh, government guys have been here. Uh, incidentally, uh, uh, and they've all checked out lots of the states. I know that. And none of the states have come up useful. So it's actually a difficult, it's actually a difficult, uh, it's actually a difficult ask. The states which can provide the land don't have the water. The states which can provide the water don't have the land. So it is a, a, a difficult question as well, which is why the government is actually now asking for creating, um, uh, creating a situation where we can create, where we can have fabulous enterprises, you know, which could require less demand on the system. That is the first step to start off with. So essentially, makes sense. And uh, let's not think of even going up to the Taiwan level. Those sort of chips, you know, the best chips that are provided, they are essentially, I mean, TMIC is essentially a government-run company. It's technically a private run enterprise, but it's actually a government-run company in Taiwan. And on any collaboration, does it does is government to government. So we are not, I mean, we are not in those sort of comparison. It's actually the low end chips that we should be looking at right now. Uh, our, our success in starting new manufacturing enterprises has been difficult because of, uh, I mean, every, I mean, uh, we essentially because uh, the states are not on board. And uh, this is something that has to be really be thought through very carefully because once it starts, there'll be a lot of demand. And I really am making that emphasis again and again, the land business, because you can't have a chip enterprise. I mean, one of the enterprises starting in Andhra Pradesh, it's supporting systems starting in somewhere in the other end of Gujarat or something else starting in, or you have an enterprise ecosystem starting in Tamil Nadu and half of it coming bound down from other end of Madhya Pradesh. It doesn't work. So that these are the things that will need to be thought through very carefully. I'm sure the government has a good plan because from the way the PIV press release has been written, it makes sure it, it makes it clear that there has been a very good deal of thought that has been put into it. Uh, and I think uh, money will not be a difficult thing. We are not talking about FD, FDI out here. Let's not even get into that argument that whether we are getting more or less FDI because it will not be foreign investment that will come into this sort of a thing. If a foreign investment comes in, it'll be to domestic, it'll be to other sectors which are already stopped and running. It'll not be coming into these sectors. So this will have to be domestic money. But domestic money will come because banks have the money, they will want to enter, uh, I mean, back up this thing, especially because uh, there seems to be a lot of benefit and there seems to be a lot of uh, comfort level that is there. So, 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 so that I don't think is too much of a trouble. And the name of chip, you know, states can sell it well. This is not something which seems like a potato chip. 
on which there is a tremendous amount of back political backlash that comes. This is not something that is a consumer in something. So states should be able to run up these sort of things. The point is, as I said again, to be able to ensure that it really happens in one place because the place where it happens, that place will become inordinately big. And that is something that will, that will have to be talked to. But I have a sneaking feeling that that's been talked about and we could talk about that later on sometime. But those things have been argued out well. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll just come back to you, Mr. Dubar, just a quick point from Sumat as well. You know, as far as um, uh, this talent pool that we are talking about and how Indians are highly qualified and available all around the world, how do we incentivize them one to come back or probably never leave? So def definitely, I mean, uh, we are now experiencing, uh, like earlier we had a brain drain, like now we are getting those brain back in many of these software industry and, you know, the other R&D industries. So definitely that's not issue. Many Indians are ready to come back and many uh, global professionals uh, uh, are also coming here. Like I, I am, uh, when I visit in Gurgaon or even in Getter Noida area where many IT companies are there, you will find many global professionals are also there. So I think attracting the professionals uh, won't be that much issue, you know, uh, because these industrial gents, they do the global recruiting and they can have, uh, uh, you know, these are the MNC, these are the large MNC, the, uh, the chip companies, you know, so they do the global recruiting, recruiting and they can uh, recruit at anywhere and they can transfer them to the Indian location. So uh, the talent is ready. Uh, we we and, and more more thing is the automation happening in even the manufacturing. You know we may not though these are labor intensive, but uh, the robots can be deployed in the the manufacturing process of the semiconductors and electronic industry. So we have seen the factories in China where robots manufacture robots or electronics get manufactured the robots. That's the region uh, and philosophy behind which uh, I proposed first robotics technology park in Greater Noida to UP government where they invited me in investor summit uh, when uh, Yogi ji came as a CM. So, so robotics and electronics uh, and manufacturing all are linked. So uh, many, many of this manual work can be transported to automated uh, uh, robots or, or say can say virtual, uh, virtual uh, workforce. You know, and then remote working is also coming in uh, uh, R&D sector and services sector, you know. So, so you know, the, it, the talent per se may not be need to be located at the plant location, you know. Uh, I mean, there, there, there are in need of some talent at the plant location, but, uh, you know, with the uses of uh, information and communication technology, the talents can be sitting in their R&D offices, their headquarters, or their other locations also. So I don't think this is the big barrier, you know, the talent is a big barrier in growth of uh, the Indian semiconductor industry. It's essentially the economics and attractiveness and, and other, other factors like the availability of resources like land, water, and this is the water intensive. So there's another thing. Now we have the environmental concern also as far as the sustainability is concerned. So from those perspectives, we have to think, but the good point is the Government is very clear here with the target in their announcement. They have mentioned about two large fab, you know, company. Uh, you know, so at least, uh, at least if they 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 kind of succeed in bringing two large fab companies, so at least we move uh, a bit ahead in this entire game. So once the two large fab company gets attracted, then definitely the 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 ecosystem around that will get built up. So the government target is very clear that they want to first start with two fab, con uh, fab companies in, in, in semiconductor, another two companies in display units. I think four companies they are talking about. Right. And then in the design also, they have uh, set up a target uh, for around 20 companies, right? So design, we are, we are already ahead. You know, if you see the all MNC semiconductor, they have some design unit in, uh, in, in Bangalore or uh, in NCR, Gurgaon area. Mm -hmm. So. So design, of course, the focus is in design also because that is the biggest value addition. If you see the entire value chain of semiconductor, 60, more than 60% value gets added or the revenue gets earned out of design, you know, uh, because rest are the mass game, commodity game. Earlier, it was a commodity game. Now, due to the uh, corona and all those things, so over-dependence on China, 
this has become the scarcity. That's what now everybody is thinking. So right. good now they are thinking because uh, the fab is uh, critical here, you know, uh, and the fab unit setting is also not easy. You know, it's as, as mentioned by Ajay Dua sir, it required, required a lot of resources. So I think uh, the government is here is very sharp in its focus. Uh, even they have fixed up their targets in terms of how many units they want to set up. And, 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 and that's good, you know, and I, I, I believe that uh, they're now they will, they will be doing the business development for, uh, you know, aligning the uh, particular MNC or even Indian company like we are talking about Vedanta <laughs> coming into electronics manufacturing and Tata coming sure. into manufacturing. So I think uh, the players are also there in market, they are very sharp, clear and the targets are also clear, only thing the matching need to be done. And I'm sure this government will able to do this matchmaking, you know. <laughs> and uh, the removed obstacles, whatever comes in way. Absolutely, all right. Time to get closing comments from all my panelists with the best way forward is You wanted to make a point about states, go ahead. Uh, Frank, I think uh, we are getting somewhere in this. And Mr. Piraman will probably know much more as I keep saying because that's from the industry. A place called Dholera in Gujarat, which has been identified as a growth center in the Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. First plant there to be set up by a financier from Abu Dhabi, technology from Israel, is already they have made an application for such as 60 to 65 nanometers. That means a electronic, consumer electronic kind of semiconductor, not the high end, wanting to set it up there. Dolera is, we had identified it when we were working on Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor because it has a natural, one of the deepest uh, ports, you know, and a natural one you didn't have to do dredging. From there, the Gujarat government is already work, working on a high speed rail connection from Dolera to Gandhi Naga. Now, highways have been built in the last five years or so. So you might see very soon that one of the two plants being mentioned. So on the sea, sand, water, connectivity, all there. And Gujarat government, as we all know, once it decides to do something in the industrial field, they do it rather efficiently and quickly. The, mm -hmm. This proposal is with them. That's number one. Number two, I think in this particular thing, the Tatas, I am very specific, I am naming them, Tatas are also now ahead. You see, in 2007 and 17, Reliance Group had shown, uh, Mr. Piramal would probably recall, RIL had shown interest in it. But given it up, though they could have got technology, collaboration, etc., because enough backup from the government of India wasn't coming in the way it has now been put in, or put in place. So I do think that one project will probably come and does could be. The Tatas are not far more progressive than earlier. Renewables going in there, you know, the money they make in micro uh, TCS is getting well spent elsewhere, etc. They are diversifying. So I'm very optimistic sure. that we would succeed and that the pro in, in, uh, pro industry incentive in this is going to be well worth it for the economy as a whole. Absolutely. So no, I, I think I think that's that's the way to go about it. Let's see I mean how it all come, pans out. There's a lot that will be required. Uh, in terms of the government's ability to stay the steam, um, we are running into election zone. So I suspect some of the good work will probably could get delayed, but I still think that it's, it's a very well thought out industrial policy. And one of the rare industrial policy that has been actually been brought by the government of India in recent years. So, so, so there's, uh, the, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of optimism built around it. And one should uh, start, one could start with that. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Simon, please close the show for us with your the box. Yeah, so I would like to add here, so semiconductor is a past story, you know, I mean, that's how we know the Silicon Valley emerged. 
you know, taking lead in semiconductor. So it's good now we, we are kind of uh, trying to take a lead in a industry which, uh, which is uh, there in existence in so many years. But now, uh, as I said, the silicon manufacturing, the fab manufacturing itself is very resource incentive. And there are some limitation as far as the technology is concerned because the Moore's law is now got uh, saturated. That is, uh, the Moore's law say every two years you need to, uh, you can, uh, you can sp uh, increase the speed of processors or computing by two times by uh, doing the multiplying the packaging. So that, that is not possible because the, the density of uh, packaging being already saturated. So we need to look beyond the silicon. That is the region and the world is uh, researching in other technologies, say if the quantum computing is coming. So that is also, there are the two stream of quantum computing. One is coming over the silicon, another is the outside silicon, like on photonics and laser and, and, and superconducting. So that's the new stream coming up. So India should actually now start thinking What's beyond silicon story? How to build the technology and innovation beyond silicon? Because we can't be over dependent on silicon. You know, we saw the how the this uh, suddenly the disruption happened, and then we are rushing for uh, creating the capacity. But uh, if if can we invest the similar kind of amount for creating some parallel technology? What we have today in the silicon based computing. So. That is the thought I wanted to give. In my press statement, you have seen that we need a large rapid incentive for quantum computing based manufacturing and development in India. So right. now, now if, if this is the correct time for India to lead in quantum computing or any of the laser based computing, light based computing, like I, I propose a concept of air computing where can we uh, go beyond the silicon, you know? Can we can we uh, can we simplify the computing technologies to such an extent that in air itself we do computing? Is possible? So so I think these are the area where uh, India need to also invest. That is moving beyond silicon because sil silicon is the technology which was invented long back, 70 years back. Now we are playing around with that. Mm -hmm. So so if India has to become a next generation of Silicon Valley kind of ecosystem, then we have to. Uh, kind of uh, seed some new technology which which give the parallel to the present silicon based technology because it's Absolutely. very resource intensive our planet cannot sustain such kind of resource hungry manufacturing be it water be it you know the land you know we we want something where the computing gets delivered in 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 rapid time even if you see the life cycle of manufacturing of silicon chips it, it takes weeks and months you know for manufacturing a chip and setting up the plant itself take a lot of time if you see the kind of equipments involved in manufacturing fabs so mm -hmm. one of the scarcity recently happened in taiwan uh, due to the sudden rush in demand and that they, they they had the limited manufacturing equipment the equipment which goes in the manufacturing the fab that's another another bottleneck in the entire supply chain link so Absolutely. I think uh, the India should take a lead in developing alternative to silicon computing, silicon-based computing. That is uh, my uh, uh, kind of uh, th thought here in this panel. Sure, points well taken. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us.